Flying had been the dream of human being for several centuries before it was finally accomplished. History is full of myths and fables featuring humans with wings doing extraordinary things in the sky. The Greek mythology Acris is believed to have flown so close to the sun despite his father's advice that his feathers feather melted leading to his crash landing and subsequent drowning in the sea. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. I am Abu Al-Fatih and you are watching the Ocean of Knowledge and History. Did you know who was Abbas ibn Firnas, the 9th century polymath and engineer who dared to make heavier than air machine flight a thousand years before motorized aeroplane was invented? The Wright brother may have been invented the first motorized aircraft, but the 9th century engineer Abbas ibn Firnas is considered to be the first human to fly with the help of a pair of wings built by silk, wood, and real feather. According to the historian, when Ibn Firnas was between the age of 65 and 70, he jumped over a cliff from Yemen's Jabal al Arus mountain and glided in the air, staying in flight for at least 10 minutes. This short flight left him both injured and disappointed. He realized that because he had neglected the mechanics of landing, he could not balance his flight in the air and ended up a crash landing. Ibn Firnas lived for another 12 years. He realized that slow landing is achieved via the collaborative work between tail and wings, a conclusion he reached after decades of study of bird flight and their landing. It is Firnas who could successfully claim to be behind the theory that went on to create the ornithopter, an aircraft that mimics bird and flees by flapping its wing. His flying machine diagram went on to become the cornerstone of aviation engineering in the late 20th century. Ibn Firnas is still considered to be the forefront of his field, given that he was the first aviator to fly with the heavier-than-air machine. Born in 9th century in al undlas which is present-day Ronda city in Spain, he spent most of his adult life in Emirates of Cordoba, one of the major learning hubs during the Umayyad Caliphate. Some historical accounts suggest al Firnas was influenced by Armin Firman, who was neither a scientist nor a polymath, but an astute observer of nature. It was Firman who built wings made of wooden planks wrapped in silk and bird's feather. In early 850s, Firman climbed to the top of tallest mosque minaret in Cordoba and jumped off, wearing the wings. Although his attempt quickly failed and he plummeted to earth, the flying machine inflated just in time and slowed his descent. He was lucky enough not to break any bone in the fall. The delay of his landing proved somewhat life-saving. Ibn Firnas wide Firman's adventure as he stood amongst the gathered. Fascinated crowd who are all watching the skies above in amazement, impressed with Firman's result. Ibn Firmas began to realize that the act of flying in the air needed further investigation. He studied flight pattern of different birds and objects for 23 years. He then constructed his flying machine and jumped off Jabal al Arus in Yemen despite his advanced years. Several centuries later, an Ottoman Turk, Ahmed Jarebi, successfully flew and landed across the Bosphorus in 1630. Ibn Firnas's keen interest in science and technology led him to invent water-powered clocks. He also experimented with sand and quartz crystal in order to understand the nature of this property. Many historians credit him for making transparent glasses material. He allegedly was also the pioneer behind the famous Undulasin glasses, which are still in demand and use today. The visually challenged benefited from him too, as he is credited with making lens which help with the reading. Nefirnas is of Burber descent. His name's root is Afirnes which is now a common and widespread name here in both Morocco and Algeria. 
several airports, bridges, hills, park, avenue, and scientific bodies have been named after him, especially in the Muslim-majority countries. A statue of him exists near Baghdad Airport, and a bridge over the river in Cordoba, Spain is also named after him. He believed to die sometime between 890 and 895, and many historians say his death may have been hastened by his injuries.